Hey guys, JC Smith here. Uh, I just want to show you that 53 foot step deck trailer I was talking about. The one I used with that 4500. Um, it's uh, it's very, very well built. Um, should be here, the kingpin setback. I think that's about 16, 18 inches, something like that. Um, it's, it's a severe heavy duty trailer. Uh, I don't remember, I don't remember what this thing weighed, but it was, it was pretty heavy, um, but it's kind of a cool setup. You know, I could I could put uh, <clears throat> backhoes on it or excavators, you know, small excavators or trucks and you know whatever. Um, these ramps are extra long, so we can get <clears throat> we can get trucks up on the front wheels up on the top. Um, occasionally, we'll make a long trip, you know, down south, pick up some trucks and. That was the original intention for this trailer. Um, you know, try and get as much on. It's 53 feet long, so it sure sounds like you can get a lot of trucks, but the kind of trucks that I like, uh, I like to buy. Um, I probably only get, I'll probably just get two on there. I don't I don't think I can get any more than that. Man, we need to get the weed eater out here. Anyways, these are <clears throat> 17 five tires on oil bath axles with uh, hydraulic disc brakes on it. And, uh, this is what I was talking about in the project about being a project. Is <clears throat> I'd like to take these fenders and come from up here and bring it out this way on a ramp so we can drive over them. Because uh, you know if you load a truck up here, I uh, I got to do cribbing to get it over, or you know have a wrecker lift the front up while I back up under it or something like that. If I wanted to put a you know wide truck on it, and it's kind of a pain in the butt. <clears throat> so. Uh, you can see the frame, the deck. It's it's a it's a Pierce frame trailer, and I just can't tell you it's it's pretty heavy duty. And then these ramps stay here. And there's a second set in the back of the trailer, so that uh, you don't have to carry them because those are all steel. As you can imagine, that's that's pretty daggum heavy. So uh, yeah, there's a second set of ramps here and they're steel also <clears throat> they're built pretty heavy so they can you know run equipment up on it it's like i got a low tire here but uh yeah big old 17 fives and it may not look like it on camera but this is two by i think two by six box tubing and i mean it's heavy so changing this over shouldn't be too difficult just time like everything else you know just takes time something we don't have a, a lot of it seems um, <clears throat> we got some screws on the back of this so if anything hangs over and we're plugged in I can flip this switch and it turns these strobes on right here and then this plug right here if I'm hanging over um, I can plug lights in here and then put them over whatever I'm hanging over so they're flashing um, and you can see in here <clears throat> what this is that's a, a five pin so it'll have strobes and stop turn tail on there too so it makes it pretty nice but you know pretty cool trailer um you know by the looks of it i'm gonna have to get some get on with some painting around here but uh, i'll just have to put that on the list um on a side track it's an old side note <clears throat> when i'm doing a project and i need a parts truck i use almost every part of the truck um this was a 95 international box truck i was going to use it and shorten it up and make it a really cool little gooseneck hauler and i started getting into it and i needed parts for another truck so i started robbing parts and what you see is what's left and this rear end is uh it's a 488 gear um, and that's the only reason it's still sitting here if it was a 410 or something like that uh, i would have had to use for it the front axles not worthless but it's close um, the kingpins are out of it and for what it costs and the time to do kingpins I have a place I could buy that axle they charge me $125 for that axle with it'll probably have right at a hundred thousand miles on it so not worth our time you know to do all the work but um, this is where we get a lot of our extra cross members when I'm doing frame shortening I'll take one of these frames I'll strip all them cross members out, every bit of them, and uh, get back here where it's at. 
the tail end. This is a pretty long frame rails. And uh, these frame rails make uh, excellent fork extensions for your fork. Um, you, know, you gotta weld some cross braces on the bottom. But uh, again, that's yet another thing we got going. Here's a section of frame we cut off the back of a truck. Um, kind of weird. They took the lift gate off the truck before we got it and they butchered that up like that. But anyhow, that's what's left of the truck when we when we're doing a project and I need it for parts. Um, there won't be much going to scrap on this. Maybe that front axle, that's about it. Everything, Every other part on this truck has been used for something else. And if you can see, look at, that, look at that tire, that front tire, look how it's leaning, topped out. That's how bad them kingpins are. Um, they got bad and the guy that had the truck before me, they were gonna change kingpins and he tore it apart and saw it was too difficult for him. So he ran it for another six years. He pumped grease in it once a week. He thought that'd be just fine. But uh, obviously not. But anyway, so there's our trailer. There's that big long 53 footer. Um, it's kind of cool the way it hooks up. It's got a, a double ended cord here. So, you know, I can unplug that. And the uh, 4500's got what we call a pogo stick. And you bungee cord that to it. But what a nice setup. Now you put this trailer on that truck and it, it rides beautiful. And surprisingly enough, that Isuzu pulls that thing pretty nice um i didn't tell you that truck's got um it's got a i believe it's a fast fuel fuel pump on it with a half inch line because those duramaxes have a cp3 that sucks fuel all the way from the tank and um a lot of guys in the trucking world or even in the private world they like to put on those fast fuels i'm not a big fan of aftermarket stuff but in that case um you know it, it helps keep that CP3 pump cool, um, and it was already on it, so I'll leave it. Uh, I don't know as if I would have put it on myself, but anyways, it's got it, and it had a tuner on it, which we removed, because I'm just not into that aftermarket stuff. I just don't like it. But uh, anyway, so there's there's that big trailer, and thought I'd give you a look at it, and tell you kind of what we were thinking about them drive over fenders. I'd like to get on that soon, but this is so far back burner, I, I'm sure it won't be. Um, we got other things going on next and um, in fact I'm going to give you a little sneak at the F450 here the 2013 it's it's almost done and it's all cleaned up I'm just waiting on programming so I'm going to give you a little sneak for those that are watching this so hang on Okay guys, there it is. All finished up. Just last thing to do is just waiting on the uh, programming from the uh, the guys I was telling you about for the body control module. Once it's done, this truck's complete. Um, you know, until I decide what I'm going to do. Um, one of my friends, he lives close to us. He's a farmer. Uh, he's got a 08 with a B10 or with a 6.4, and he's been having troubles with it, and he'd kind of like to get rid of it. And this one's. You know, I think it's an 08. It's an 08 or a 9 or 10 because it's a 6.4 and that's the only years they used them. But he was kind of interested in taking his dump bed off and putting it on here. And I don't know. We'll see. But, uh, man, what a difference simulators make over them old factory wheels. Um, side note, a friend of mine is a, has a vinyl graphics business. And he's going to make me uh, decals to go in here like a medallion. And... Uh, I don't know if he'll get it in time, but for you know for the final video on this thing, but it's gonna say uh, J.C. Smith Projects on here. That'd be kind of neat, but I don't know if he'll get them in time. Anyhow, um, we got we got the painless dent removal people gonna take care of that, but they're so booked it's gonna be a little while. Let me back up here. You can see inside. It's, she's got it all all cleaned up and you know ready to go. It's it's exactly what you'd expect for this miles on a truck, you know, it's, it still smells new inside, and there you go, dang on. That mileage was just up there a second ago. Let me turn that key on. There you go. 6884 is what she's got on her. So, uh, 
We got uh, remote power mirrors, uh, power windows, power locks, and uh, keyless entry, of course. And uh, there's the integrated trailer brake controller and all the upfitter switches. Um, it doesn't have CD stereo. That was it's kind of odd to me, but that's usually what they do. Um, this is for the heated mirrors. These trucks have an absolutely killer air conditioner and heater. Um, of course, it's a small cab, but my last one of these, my personal vehicle, was a 2012 F-250, and uh, you know, I used to drive that thing all the way, all around. You know, you turn that air conditioner on low speed on cold, and you'd have to turn the temperature up because it was so stinking cold. But uh, yeah, pretty nice truck. Um, like I said, I don't know what we're gonna do with it. We might buy one of those. CM SK beds and put on it. Um, they're a Western hauler bed and it's uh, it's designed so it uh, it matches the profile of the cab out here. And it's a flat bed with side skirts. Um, it's got a gooseneck hinge and a rear two inch receiver also. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. I haven't decided yet. But uh, they're getting there. Monday they'll be out. They're gonna do the program. Um, like I said, they're VIN specific. It has to be programmed for the VIN. Uh, I left this kick panel off because this is where it's at, right back up in here. And the thing about it is, this cab obviously had power windows and power locks. The old one didn't. We've been over this a couple times. And what happens is this module is from the one with the um, XL without. So there's a couple places where the fuses are missing, and if it was just putting fuses in, not a big deal. We just put them in, of course, but the actual contacts are not behind here, so the circuitry is not there. So we left this in. Well, this has the VIN number to my truck embedded in it. This has the VIN number. This one has a VIN number for the donor truck, so they have to program that, and um, I think... They have to enable the cruise control because my donor truck didn't have cruise control, so they have to enable that in the ECM, and that should be it. But uh, yeah, there's your sneak peek. So uh, I'll show you more as soon as we make a decision. I don't know what we're going to do, but uh, like I said, it's just about done. So, all right, guys, we'll see you on the next one.